Well, good morning, my Messiah friends. It is great to see you this morning. We hope you had a great first week of school, that you got your uh, kit this week, and that you've been able to unpack it and enjoy it. This morning, we talk about uh, the next in our series of Ten Commandments. And so if you didn't already do this in worship, if you did it, then that's fine. I'd invite you to peel off the uh, sticker and uh, add it to our tablet. Today, we're going to talk about Commandment number four, which says, honor your father and mother. Well, today we're going to talk about how we spend our time and how we are supposed to, according to our first commandment, put God first. God is the only God, and so we follow his authority as number one. He also gives us other authorities to follow, like moms and dads and teachers and principals and uh, bosses if we're adults, and how we honor and love God first. It says fear, love, and trust in God above all things. And then how we honor those that God uh, in his wisdom puts in order uh, over us. And so that might be parents or bosses. So this morning to uh, kick us off, we're going to invite you to pull up a handout that was in your kit or that is attached on our Sunday School page, www.messiahtampa.com slash Sunday School. And it's called A Penny th for Your Thoughts. And it's got a cow on it like this. So we're going to look today and see how we spend our time. So maybe you need this sheet and maybe uh, something you have a lot of, something you have 24 of, so maybe paper clips. Or maybe you've got like pennies and loose change and you can find 24 uh, coins. That would be great. Maybe you've got 24, you got a bag of M&Ms and you've got 24 candies at your house or maybe 24 blocks. Something that you just have 24 of. I'm going to use paper clips, but uh, maybe use some change. And we're going to see in a full day, in a 24-hour day, how do we spend our time? Because sometimes our time communicates what we put first or what we value. We know we want to put God first, and then we want to uh, honor him and honor those that he puts uh, over us. So take a look at this sheet here real quick and see how do we spend 24 hours. It says chores. So if you spend an hour a day doing chores, you'd put one on this. If you spend no hours doing something, don't put any on it. And if you spend a lot, if maybe you spend three hours, then you put three in it. Uh, the next one says TV, Netflix, Hulu, or Disney Plus, or movies. How much time do we spend on entertainment watching stuff like that? Maybe even maybe it's YouTube clips. How much time do we watch stuff? Um, how much time on our iPad, our computer, our phone, or technology in 24 hours? How many for sleeping? If you're doing what you're supposed to and getting seven, eight, or nine hours of sleep a night, there's probably going to be a lot of them on that one. That's good. Eating, school, and studying, and homework. How much time doing sports and activities like dance or scouting or whatever? Playing. How much time doing video games or computer games? How much time doing prayer or Bible study or Bible reading or worship? How much time doing hygiene like brushing teeth or taking a shower? Um, other stuff, just spending other stuff. And then we added one down here that says family. How much time do we spend with our family? So maybe pause the video, grab the sheet, grab the thing you've got 24 hours of and start stacking and seeing what we spend the most time, what we maybe value. So pause the video and take a look at that. Are you back? Yeah? According to whatever we stacked, what is most important to you? What do you spend the most time doing? There are some good things on there, things we need to do to live, like hygiene and sleep and eat. Good things that we need to do. Things that we can keep God involved in even uh, as we do them. We can pray when we eat. We can talk to God while we're brushing our teeth or sing a pr praise song to him while we're in the shower. Even in our schoolwork, when we uh, do what we're supposed to do and uh have good behavior and listen to the teachers. We can honor God while we're doing our uh, schoolwork. That's a good way. What did showed up as getting the most attention in our time? What had zero things or no things? Does it show what's most important to us? How many did prayer and Bible study and worship and reading God's word and praying have? Any? How does it make God feel when we don't spend any time with him? How do, how do we feel about God's importance in our life? 
Well, we're not going to be perfect at this. We can include God in our everyday life and everyday things that we do. This morning, we're going to take a look at a couple different Bible passages. The first one comes from uh, Exodus 31, 18, uh, through chapter 32, 1 through 8. And it says, when the Lord had finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him two stone tablets inscribed with terms of the covenant written with the finger of God. That's where he gave him the Ten Commandments. When the people saw how long it was taking Moses to come down the mountain, they gathered around Aaron. Come on, they said, make us some gods who can lead us. We don't know what happened to our fellow leader Moses, who brought us from the land of Egypt. So Aaron said, take gold rings from the ears of your wives, sons and daughters, and bring them to me. All the people took the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. Then Aaron took the gold, melted it down, and molded it into the shape of a calf. When the people saw it, they exclaimed, O Israel, these are the gods who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Aaron saw how excited the people were, so he built an altar in front of the calf. Then he announced, Tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. The people got up early the next morning and sacrificed burnt offerings and peace offerings. After this, they celebrated with feasting and drinking and indulged in pagan revelry. The Lord told Moses, Quick, go down the mountain. The people you brought from the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. How quickly they have turned away from the way I commanded them to live. They have melted down gold and made a calf and have bowed down and sacrificed to it. They are saying, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Not good. They're breaking that first commandment about putting God first and honoring his holy name. They also aren't listening to their leader, Moses. They got worried that uh, he wasn't coming back, and so they didn't follow what his uh, rules that he'd given them. They, they decided to take matters into their own hands. Well, you and I probably don't have a golden calf. We probably don't have a statue or an altar in our house where we worship a false god. But we can sometimes fall into that temptation of not putting God first. We can even take good things like sports and activities and put them first, make them more important than God. We have to be careful with that. We're going to fall short sometimes when we know we've got God's love and forgiveness. Our theme verse today from Mark 12, 29 says this, The most important commandment is this, Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is our only Lord. So put God first. That's our first commandment. We need to do that. And then as we get through with our one, two, and three commandments about God, then he tells us how we're supposed to start relating to other people. And he talks about parents and other authorities. Ephesians 6, 1 through 9 says this in our uh, Bible passage today. It says, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, for this is the right thing to do. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. You will have a long life on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. So God says, hey, one of the ways that we enjoy a good life where we are, if we've got good parents, which most of us do, they're reminding us to spend time in God's word, talking to him, pointing to him. And as we listen to our parents, they encourage us to do the important things, right? Like sleep and brush our teeth and eat healthy and to read God's word with us. We listen and honor and obey them because that's who God put in charge of us. When we are older and we have our, our at work and we have a boss, that's who God has ordered to put over us. We talked about last week how God is a holy God. He's a good God. And because he's holy and good, we trust that he's in control and working things for good. So we put him first and honor his name and treat him as the only God. One of the things that God does for our care is to give us parents and other authorities to help us have order, help us have structure, help us stay on track. 
And so he says, after we follow all these commandments of listening to and obeying and worshiping him, the next thing we need to do is honor those authorities he put over us. Parents, teachers, principals, bosses, and law and order, and says those things are for our benefit. When we follow those authorities that he's put over us, life operates better. Well, we fail at both of these, don't we? We don't put God first all the time. We sometimes let other things get in the way. We have maybe not a, a golden calf idol, but we have other things that we let get in the way of him being first. And we don't always love our parents. We don't always honor our parents. Honor is a step above a love where we listen and follow and respect. Even when we disagree, we still show honor and respect to our parents and other authorities. We break these commandments and we don't keep them perfectly. Jesus did keep this commandment. He kept all of the commandments perfectly, but he kept this commandment. And so that's in Matthew 26, 36 to 46. So we'll take a look at that real quick here. Matthew 26, 36 to 46. And it says, Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John. He became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and bowed with his face to the ground, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and found them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you watch and pray so that you will not give into temptation? For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, my father, if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. Then he came to the disciples and said, Go ahead and sleep, have your rest. But look, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going, for my betrayer is here. Well, Jesus knew that he should love and honor God and put him first. His father was God, so he honored his father. Father. He honored his heavenly father as God and he honored his father. He didn't really want to suffer and die. He knew that would be painful and unpleasant, but he trusted God's good plan and he was willing and obedient and said, not what I will, not what I want, what you will and what you want. He was obedient and he let the uh, guards arrest him. He was put on trial. He died and was crucified. And because he kept all of these Ten Commandments perfectly and was willing to be obedient to the point of death, he fixed the sin problem so that when you and I break these commandments, we could have his love and his forgiveness. Jesus knew that we don't put God first, that we break that first commandment, that we don't honor our parents and other authorities. We don't always listen to them. We don't always obey them. And so we break that commandment. Because we can't keep the commandments perfectly, we deserve to be separated from God, to be enemies of God, and he didn't want that. He loved us so much that he followed God's will 100% perfectly so that we would have grace and forgiveness. And a second chance. When we fail to fall short, when we put our priorities out of whack and spend too much time doing not important things and not enough time honoring and worshiping God, that we'd have forgiveness. When we let something get in the way and not putting God first, that we would have love and forgiveness. And when we don't honor our parents and other authorities, that we would have God's love and forgiveness and a chance again. So Jesus kept these commandments perfectly. And because Jesus did, we have forgiveness. But Jesus was also God's son. And so he's part of God. So when we do our Mark 12, 29 verse, the important commandment of listening to the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. We're honoring what Jesus has done for us. And so we show our love and thankfulness 
to him for what he's done by following him and honoring him and by following and honoring the people he puts over us for our good, for order, our parents and other authorities. Well, thanks for joining me for this lesson. Feel free to take a look at our Ten Commandments booklet. We're going to look at uh, commandment number four, which is on page eight, uh, which tells us a little bit more about honoring our father and mother. You're also free to grab your uh, action cards. They were came in a little thing that looked like this in your kit. And we're going to add card number five about honoring parents and authorities as we see the rest of our Exodus story. There were also several other activities that don't need supplies that were in our family devotion this week. Like who's leaving whom out or um, God is the only God. There's a bunch of activities that don't involve supplies that your family could do together to help tie this in. Of God is the only God, the only authority. We put him first and therefore honoring our parents. There's one other activity. And I said, for this, I'm going to ask parents and grandparents and adults, can you go in another room for a minute? Yep, that's right. This part is just for the kids. I'm just going to talk to them for a moment. Go ahead, kids. Respectfully and honoring your parents, shoo them out of the room for a minute. Yeah? Are the parents gone? They're maybe in the next room and bit so that they're like that everybody's safe, but they're not listening right now. Okay, great. In your kit this week, there was also a sheet that looks like this that had six different things on it. What I'm going to invite you to do this week as a special little surprise for your moms or dads, your grandparents, your caregivers, or maybe even a teacher that you're going to see this week, somebody that's an authority. Cut these apart. So here there's six of them, so that's one for each day this week. Cut that apart, maybe color it, draw on it, write on it, something that sa it says, my favorite thing about you is, hey, maybe leave one of these little cards for your parent or grandparent this week to find, someplace where they'll see it. So maybe you know uh, if I leave it in their briefcase or on their computer screen, they'll see it. Or I'll put it in their coffee mug so when they pour their coffee first thing in the morning, they'll, they'll find that note in there. Just as a little, little way to show our parents that we love them, that we honor them, that we respect them because uh, God gave them to us, and that by doing that we can show our honor and love and respect for God. So maybe, uh, maybe find that sheet and color those and cut those out this week as a special little surprise for your parents or your teacher or an authority in your life uh, as a way to encourage them. So shh, little secret, but if you can find that in your kit, that'll be a fun surprise for your uh, parent this week or uh, another authority. Thanks for joining us for Sunday School. Have a great uh, week at school and online in person, and we will look forward to seeing you next week for our next Sunday School lesson. Bye, my friends.